Today I'm going to be discussing relative extrema and the first derivative test. So let's suppose that we had some function f and I had uh, picked some number c in the domain of the function. Then we say that f of c is a relative maximum of that function or also referred to sometimes as the local maximum if there exists an open interval so an interval of the form AB such that f of c if I meant to write down c so f of c is greater than or equal to f of x for all x from this interval Right? And then in particular, we would say that f of c is in a relative minimum or a local minimum if, once again, there exists an open interval a, b such that f of c is less than or equal to f of x for all. So I meant to write all x in that open interval. Now in particular, if this statement is true, that f of c is greater than or equal to f of x for all x in the domain of the function, then we don't just call it a relative maximum, we then call it an absolute maximum. And similarly, if f of c is less than or equal to f of x for all x in the domain of the function and not just some open interval, then we call it an absolute minimum. Right, and some other um, terminology that you may encounter, the relative maximum or relative minimum is sometimes referred to as relative extrema. Now, another important concept to, to note or to take note of is the critical number of a function. So some number c in the domain of the function is called a critical number. If f prime of c is equal to zero or if prime of c is undefined. So under those circumstances the values c from the domain that satisfies these conditions are called critical numbers. Now it's important to note as well that f of c is a relative extremum, so meaning either a relative max or a relative min of the function f. Right, so if f of c is a relative extremum, then c is a critical number of f or it is an endpoint of the domain of f. Right, so as a result, this is why it was important to take note of the definition of a critical number because it is certainly related to finding relative extrema. So the question now is how do we find these relative extrema? And for that, we have a procedure called the first derivative test. Step one is to find all critical numbers of your function. And remember, we have a definition for critical numbers. It amounts to finding the derivative of the function and then finding out which values satisfy any of these two conditions. The second thing, once we've found the critical numbers, is to compute the derivative of the function and evaluate it for x values less than the critical number and bigger than the critical number. So if this was a number line and I had c placed on the number line, I can then pick an x value less than c and substitute it into the first derivative and get out an answer. So when you get out the answer, we need to check the sign of that answer. So you can either get positive or negative. So let's suppose we obtained a positive answer when we took a value less than c and plugged it in. 
And then let's suppose when we took a value bigger than C and plugged it into the derivative, we got a negative answer. So in this case, we then say that at x equals to C, meaning at that critical number, we have a relative maximum. And the explanation is as follows. So this plus implies that the function is increasing on the left hand side of C and then minus implies and denotes that the function is decreasing on the right hand side of C. So observe that increase followed by a decrease has resulted in a peak in that function for well around that value C. So clearly there is a relative maximum value. Now let's suppose that for a value less than C when we plugged it in we got a negative and for a value greater than C when we plug it into the first derivative, we got an, a positive. Then here, at the critical value x equals to c, we have a relative minimum. Right, and once again, explanation, it was decreasing to the left of c, and then on the right, it started increasing. So around c, in an open interval around c, observe what has happened we have a minimum value in there. The other two cases, so I haven't exhausted the, the combinations of plus and minus. We could have plus and plus, or minus and minus. So in these two cases, there is no conclusion. Right, because we see there was no change. So here we have no relative extrema. So it's important to take note of the change in sign. A change from plus to minus means relative maximum. A change from minus to plus means relative minimum. And this all revolves around finding the critical numbers and evaluating the derivative on the left and on the right of those critical numbers. So let's keep this procedure in mind and now let's attempt the following question. So the question says find all relative extrema of the following function. So again, we're going to use the first derivative test. Step one says, find the critical values. Right, so that's what we need to do. So we're going to find the critical numbers. Right, in order to do that, I need to compute the derivative. So what is f prime of x? So the derivative of 2x cubed is 6x, the der 6x squared. The derivative of minus 3x squared is minus 6x. The derivative of minus 72x is minus 72. The derivative of 15 is 0, so I'm not including it. So we now need to, to find the critical number, and you will either find it in the case by computing, so by equating the derivative to 0 and finding which values satisfy that equation, or checking where does the derivative, where is the derivative undefined. So in this case, the derivative is a polynomial. So the polynomial is never undefined. It is defined everywhere. So that means the only way we can find a critical number is to solve f prime of x equals to 0. And we're going to find those x values satisfying it. So we're now going to solve 6x squared minus 6x minus 72 equals to 0. I'm going to factor out the value of 6. When I factor that out, I'm left with x squared minus x minus 12 equals to 0. And then I can factorize this. So going a step further, I then have the two factors x minus 4 and x plus 3. Right? And this, of course, is obtained by saying f prime of x equals to 0. So we then have that x equals to 4 x equals to 3, sorry, minus 3. So these are the two critical numbers. Of f, and that is what we required. So now in step 2, what do we do? In step 2, we take the critical numbers that we've found, we put it onto a number line, I've got negative 3, and I've got positive 4. And what we now have to do is, pick values on the left and the right of each of these critical numbers and plug it into the derivative. So this formula here. 
Once you plug it into the derivative, we need to take note of the sign and then interpret the changes in the sign as I had placed on the previous slide. So let's proceed to do that. So this is the procedure we're following. We want to interpret what's happened there. So pick any number less than minus 3. Maybe you want to pick minus 4. Plug it in to this function. Do you get a positive or do you get a negative answer? You will get a positive answer. Pick any number between negative 3 and 4. 0. Plug 0 in. Do you get a positive or do you get a negative answer? You get a negative answer. Pick any number bigger than positive 4. Maybe you're going to pick 10. Plug it in. Do you get a positive or do you get a negative answer? You get a positive answer. So now this amounts to actually interpreting the change of signs at x equals to minus 3 and at x equals to 4. So what's happened at minus 3? It's increased and then it's decreased. What's happened at positive 4? It's decreased and then it's increased. So in both cases we have found relative extrema. In the first case we have a relative maximum or local maximum. In the second case we have a relative minimum or you can call it a local minimum. So that means at x equals to 3 the coordinate minus 3 and the y value f at minus 3 is a relative maximum. That's what we have found. And then here at x equals to 4, the coordinate 4 and its corresponding y value, f at 4, you can determine this by plugging in 4 into that function. And similarly here, plug in minus 3 into that function. In this case, we've found that this coordinate represents a relative or a local minimum. And before I end, I think it's also important to note the following that in finding these critical numbers and placing it on the number line, these open intervals which we immediately find. So here we have interval minus infinity to negative 3. So on this interval, the sign for the derivative on it is positive. So that means here f is increasing on that interval and in particular for the interval minus 3 to 4 using the same interpretation we've got a negative sign for the derivative on that interval so here f is decreasing and for the last interval which is 4 to positive infinity the sign of the derivative on that interval was positive, so similarly here, f is increasing. So by following the first derivative test, we were not only able to find the relative extrema, but we were also able to interpret whether the function was increasing or decreasing on those respective open intervals that we had found.